basically what we're doing right now is we're re-logging and resampling the previous drill core um, that uh, Homestake, primarily Homestake and Inco developed uh, back in the in um, the 70s and also <coughs> some work that was done during the 90s. Um, uh, based on the successful conclusion of that program, we're going to do some field exploration during um, starting the spring of 2011. I want to stress that this project is, at this point, exploration and evaluation. There's no plans at this point to place any property into production. Um, the decision on that will be made probably two years from now. And uh, after due consideration of what we found and what we, what we have. Now, I should note that in the last, uh, since I left here, hello, hello, since I left here in 1978, there's been no exploration done um, to improve or increase the resource base up here, top of resources. Uh, <laughs> So it's about high time that we do this. And um, my objective, um, and I think it's good for everybody, including the company and including the, the, uh, the community, is to develop a resource that would be uh, uh, able to uh, support a sustainable mining operation for uh, decades rather than just uh, five years, 10 years, or whatever. Um, the previous, previous efforts that uh, happened in the 80s were basically just to, uh, to mine known resources. I just want to say a little bit about the copper uh, market. Uh, this is the world copper production from 1900 to 2010. And it's long, but, um, the district up here, the copper country, um, operated it's, it's Haiti of operation was in uh, 19, 1870 to 1920 back here. Basically, the the Copper Country is a world famous world famous uh, district um, that was surpassed in production by other districts uh, as the demand for copper and, and copper exploration progressed. Um, if you look at the the production, the world production of copper, uh, most of it comes from Chile and Peru, and uh, China is slightly larger than our production. However, if you look at the copper consumption, uh, the United States, of course, um, is, is here in blue, and China has far surpassed us. So they're actually going, China is going to um, all over the world. Um, to to Africa, to South America, and buying up entire deposits to support this consumption <coughs> that they're, they're demanding. They're, they're trying to modernize their entire country, and it takes a lot of profit to do so. Uh, if you look at the reserves, um, again, as you might expect, Chile has the largest reserve, has 38% of the copper in the world that we know of. Uh, the United States is second, and China not far behind. Uh, there are a couple things to remember here. Uh, is that the world discoveries of copper peaked in 1996. Even though there are more copper discoveries being made and developed, um, they're they're not at the same same rate that uh, that happened in the, in the past. And that uh, 21 of the 28 of the largest copper mines in the world are not amenable to expansion. Uh, in fact, I can show you what's happening here. In the, in the next slide. Uh, many of the large copper mines will be exhausted between 2010 and 2015. If you look at the U.S. copper production, um, this, uh, this orange is the is actual production. You can see there's a big drop off here um, about 2004. And the reason for that is the copper price actually went up. So uh, the mines are basically uh, lowering their cutoff grade so that they could um, uh, increase the length of their of their their, their mine uh, mine life, and uh, <clears throat> uh, so that 
actually results in, in less copper being 